Welcome along guys. Well, I'm back out again on the beautiful V4S Panigale. This is the 2020 version with the wings. I've actually done a first ride review on this bike, which I'll stick up the top, wherever it is, um, for you to have a look at if you haven't already seen it. But this is my in-depth review. I've been riding this bike for a week now. I'm sort of learning a bit more about it. I'm learning what it's all about. And I'm here to let you know what this bike is like to use on the road. That is what this video is all about. The Panigale V4S as a road bike. Who's the sexiest? Come on, who, who wins on sex appeal? Yeah, okay, the bike does. for a week from Ducati UK I've been out and about I've been riding the pants off it <laughs> as much as possible so I can draw a final conclusion to this bike it looks amazing but is it as amazing to own and ride oh yeah Ducati power this is obviously a V4 this bike came out last year was it and then it's been updated for this year with some small tweaks. They basically made it easier to ride, made it easier on track, faster on track by making it easier, <laughs> if that makes sense. They've not really done much else. I mean, they've changed the fairing. It's got the V4R fairing on it now with the wings. Those wings supposedly give you 30 kilos of downforce. 150 miles an hour so they you know on the road are you going to notice anything with those wings on it well you shouldn't be <laughs> because the speed limit is 70 miles an hour other tweaks to the fairing it's a bit wider at the front oh that's my testicles it's got a higher screen to give more wind protection it's a bit wider again for better aerodynamics i say wind protection it's more about track performance so the rider can tuck in behind the bike more because in all honesty this bike is a track bike this bike the catty have built this to be the pinnacle of sports bike motorcycles on the track now i am i'm a big sports bike fan you know i love sports bikes one thing i because i'm getting a bit older because i'm now approaching 50 yes i am still under 50 i'm approaching 50 you know, I tend to get, you get a little bit stiffer, you get a bit less flexible, and uh, sports bikes can become a little bit uncomfortable. I still can ride them, no problem, but I prefer the more comfortable versions. The V4S is definitely, you know, with its track development, it's definitely been really no real considerations to, to making this a good road bike. Oh jeez. The bars are quite a long way forward, so there's quite a stretch to the bars, more so than the BMW S1000 RR, more so than the new Aprilia RSV4 1100. I'd say this was one of the most stretched forward bikes I've been on. It's not a cramped machine, because you're bending forward more, you don't get the impression it's small, you don't get the impression it's cramped. It actually seems like a good sized motorcycle when you're riding it because you are leant forward. It seems like the front of it is quite a long way away. Oh, this is where it excels. You, you, you get it on the boil a bit. You chuck some corners at it. And this is why you put up with that slight discomfort from that leant forward position. It's amazing when you get to some twisties. I wouldn't say it's that easy to ride. I know Ducati have done a lot of work to this this year, as I say, adjusting the throttle response, limiting torque when you first open the throttle, just to try and smooth everything out. But it's still not the easiest bike to ride. They've not made it really intuitive like the S1000 RR. That bike is telepathic.
classic when you ride it. You can ride it really without putting any effort in. This you've got to work at it, this you've got to put the effort in, you've got to learn how to ride it. That, that V4 motor, is it a V4? I'm not so sure because it sounds like a twin, it's got the low down manners of a twin. It's not until you get to sort of 12,000 revs that you realise it's a V4. This engine is really very, very similar to their MotoGP bikes. You know, it's got the counter-rotating crank, which I mentioned in my, my first ride. It's got the same firing order as the MotoGP bikes. You know, th this engine really is an adaptation of what they're racing. What Davizioso is racing around the global circuits. You know, you, with this bike, you can tell what Ducati has learned on track has been translated onto the road. I don't think there's another bike where that is as, as, as apparent as it is on this. This is really, I think, as close as you're going to get to a MotoGP bike on the road. The engine makes an incredible 215 horsepower, so it's got a lot of power. 120, I believe, newton meters of torque. I'll pop it up on the screen. Yeah, it's a, it's a powerhouse, an absolute powerhouse. The bike also only weighs 195 kilos wet, so it's also incredibly light. And to throw it round a set of twisties, you know, it turns in quick. It's just a beautiful thing to ride when you want to go on the gas a bit, and it's just so stable. I know I mentioned this in my, look at that, create the boat. I know I mentioned this in my first ride, but the thing it just has an infinite amount of grip. And it's, it's un, you know, you can't unsettle this bike. It is so stable. You know, I've never ridden a bike where the front wheel feels like it's locked to the ground as much as it does on this. Instant shove from the bottom end. stable in the corners really stable for such a light bike it's incredibly stable so much initial pick up super stable god so much drive as well it's an absolutely incredible thing when ridden as the good folk at Ducati intended. It's a bike which requires some effort. It requires some finessing. It's not going to flatter your riding. It's going to make you work for it. That is the thing with this boy. It's going to make you work for that enjoyment. And when you do do that perfect set of twisties or that perfect lap on track, then it's all the more rewarding because you know you've earned it. You've got to be careful. This bike is so fast. It picks up speed. It's rampant. It's absolutely rampant the way it picks up speed. That sort of engine characteristic where it just picks up, goes, is really difficult to control yourself on the road. I find that really addictive. So this sort of... If, if you're the sort of person who can't help but get a little bit carried away and is a bit of a hooligan, this may not be the bike for you because it's certainly a machine which makes you want to ride fast. So let's go on to the top five things I really like about this and the top five things which I'm not so keen on. 
because it's brilliant as this bike is, it's certainly not perfect. Let's start with the negatives and then we can end on a high then. <laughs> so the bad things about this bike is it kicks out a tremendous amount of engine heat from those rear cylinders. You've got both the rear cylinders right under your seat. You've also got the exhaust for those two cylinders right under the seat as well. And I rode this home from Ducati wearing rider jeans and by the time I got home, my testicles were like boiling the bag. Even going on the motorway, even going at speed, it didn't alleviate the heat. The heat was still there no matter what speed you were doing. And I, I'm not sure I could live with that. This is why I've come out in leathers today to see if it's as much of a problem when you've got leathers on. And I'm pleased to say it isn't. I can still feel a bit of heat down in the nether regions, but it's not uncomfortable. Not only does it look hot, <laughs> you feel hot riding it. She's a hottie in more than one respect. The other thing which is a bit of a letdown for such an expensive bike, and if you're going to use it as a road machine, you've got no fuel gauge. The bike is also only holds 16 litres, so you've only got about 100 miles range, realistically, with realistic riding. So it's a little bit limited on range, no fuel gauge. Also, there's no, there's no creature comforts, there's no heated grips. There's not even a button. I don't think there's even an option for heated grips on this. There's no cruise control, which you could really do with when you've uh, got all that weight on your wrist, just to alleviate some of that. So you've got none of that. It's, it's fair, you know, this thing is all about racetrack performance. There's not really been any considerations to road comfort. I can't think of anything else. I think that's all of the downsides, really, with this bike. Let's move on to what is fantastic with this. First of all, the looks of it. It looks beautiful. I, I don't think there is a better looking motorcycle on the road. I think it's an amazing looking bike. It's this beautiful red paintwork. You know, when you're filling it up at the petrol station, people do look at you. you or you feel that you feel special. Whether they are looking at you or not is another matter. I'm sure they are but you just feel like they are. <laughs> All right, let's try and spin around. Let's see what they are. Oh, cheers, mate. Thank you. I might turn him around, so don't get too excited. Turn in circle. Ain't bad for a sporter, for a sporty bike. There we go. Look. Look what we got here now, look. Mr. Caterham, man. The fit and finish is also right up there with one of my favorite things with this bike. Everywhere you look, the attention to detail is incredible. We'll do a walk around in a minute and I'll just show you through some of the little little features of this, the little finishing features. I mean, the, the, the materials used on this bike, magnesium, titanium, you know, there's, there's, there's no expense spared in the, in the core of this bike, you know, magnesium, clock brackets. There's not much carbon fiber on this. I'll actually, there's no carbon fiber on this for a 25,000 pound motorcycle I would have liked to have seen the odd little carbon mudguard or the odd bit of carbon trim now that is all extra so so that's a little bit of a disappointment for such an expensive bike right up there is one of my favorite things and I guess it comes down to the engine performance a little bit but the quick shifter is I think the best the best quick shifter yeah, yeah, I think it's the best. It's, it's got a really nice action. Sometimes the quick shifters can be a little bit saggy, a little bit flabby in the actual linkage. You know, there'll be a bit of movement as it goes in here. This one's very precise. And normally with the precise quick shifters, they're very fast. They can be a little bit notchy. This one seems to work at any revs. The down blipper. Bit of gas, a little part throttle is good, full throttle is good, and it does everything. I'm, not, I'm keeping my eye on this little Caterham that you might want to play. <laughs> I'm always up for a game. Come on, you know you want to. Come on, go right, have some fun on the twisties. Come on, sir. No, I can't tempt him. So there she is. It's a, it's a beautiful looking thing, you know, it's absolutely beautiful. I, I'm not 
I'm not 100% sure on the wings. I loved the wings when I saw it initially on the V4R, but after, after having this, uh, I'm not sure if the wings perhaps spoil the lines of the motorcycle a little bit. Also, the wings are plastic. Uh, as, as I mentioned, there's no carbon fibre on this bike. Plastic mudguard, plastic wings, you know, even, even the, the heat shields and the rear hugger plastic. So I think that's a little bit disappointing. I think on the S model, you should get a little bit of carbon fibre included in the price. The dashboard is, is very nice. As I say, I do like the Ducati layout. I do like the layout of the clocks. It's very easy to read. Nice, easy to read rev counter. You know, all the other bits are a little bit small here, but I guess it's fine. You, you can put up with it. Beautifully finished top yoke. Electronic Olin's steering damper. Magnesium clock bracket. And even like the, uh, the headstock, you know, it's, it's incredibly well finished. Little things like this, little grills, like this little, this little grill down here. I mean, the styling, the styling of it is, is amazing. The rear electronic O-Lins, all of the rear set layout, even the standard rear sets, very, very nice quality. And my favorite side stand from the Street Fighter is back again. Beautifully well made. Hang it on your mantelpiece, not prop your bike up. The fuel tank is under the bike here. That's actually the fuel tank, which I think it isn't metal. Well, it's certainly not steel. It could be aluminium, it could be like a, a, a composite material, but the fuel tank is right down here. So, you know, it's got 16 litres, but it's all very low on the bike. Sexy DRL running lights, and I love the single cow. You know, on the Street Fighter, you had a pillion seat. It looks much better with this rear cow piece. Marchesini wheels, lightweight, forged aluminium, anodized black. There is no denying it is a special looking bike. I mean, even the, the DRLs at the front, I really like those as well. Very unique looking. It's almost looks like a shark to me. It's got quite a shark-like profile, especially with the big grills, you know. It's very shark-like, pointy front end, Big grills on the side, a very aggressive stance. I think it is styled after a great white. A lovely machine. You cannot deny. Let's jump back on. So I've really enjoyed my time with the V4S over the last week. This is the first Panigale I've ever ridden on the road. So that is uh, quite amazing. You know, I've ridden the uh, V2 on the track at the California Superbike School only last week actually so I'm very new to Panigales I've really enjoyed my time with this I think going back to the heat thing with the leathers on riding this round all morning I'm not finding any issues with the heat so I think it is just a problem if you're not going to ride in leathers with leathers on I'm absolutely fine certainly today but it is quite cool today but uh, yeah when I rode it back originally in, in jeans the heat was a, was a game changer. You know, that would actually stop me riding the bike. But leather's on, no problem at all. The V4S is very much a track machine. So before you go and buy one of these, you've got to bear that in mind. If you want a bike just to use on the road, they're a better road bikes. They're a better sports bikes for the road than the Panigale. If you absolutely must, <laughs> have the red Ducati, fine. You can live with it, you can work around it, but be aware there are more comfortable road-based sports bikes, which will be easier to live with than this on the street. But this does have something special about it. This has that je ne sais quoi, that extra element that say the, the S1000 double R doesn't, you know. This has that bit of extra spice, a bit of extra flair. But I hope you enjoyed it guys. I've really enjoyed riding this. I will be borrowing the, the V2 in a couple of weeks time and I'm really excited about trying the V2. I think the V2 could be the better road bike because it's a little bit less crazy than this. A little bit more sensible. Power levels which are more usable 
for the road. So if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to see the V2 videos. I'll try and do a similar thing with the V2, a first ride followed up by, you know, a long-term ownership, well, long-term, a couple of weeks. I've got that bike for a couple of weeks. So everything I can tell you about it that I've learned within a couple of week period. So there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care, ride safe, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, <laughs>